Don't even be swayed by motives as honorable as mine. I wish I could. But no, I won't. Democritus will persuade you to give in, Leonti. I think he will think exactly as I do. In that case, madame, I won't insist any further, but might I ask you for a brief word in private? Well, I hate to waste any more of your valuable time, sir. Well, if you insist. Very well. I consent. Perhaps you could offer me a piece of advice, madame, on which the tranquility of my entire life depends. But I can't give you such advice. I am not Hermocrates. Oh, no, madame. On this occasion, yours is the only opinion that matters. Oh. I need a heart in which reason is tempered by emotion, and your sex lends itself to that more readily than mine. Oh, madame, by everything that makes you warm and human, I beg you, hear me out. Uh. Well, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, please, uh, go on. A few days ago, as I travelled through this forest, I saw a lady out walking. Let me describe her. Perhaps you may recognise her. In height, she achieves majesty. She has, I would say, the only face in the world in which the most tender features are combined stunningly with the greatest authority, austerity, and modesty. I, I have no idea who you're talking about. So I, I'm listening. She's still young. But not like those ridiculous young women who bore me with their triviality, who know how to catch a man's eye, but not how to win a man's heart. No. No, she is at that age truly worthy of love. Huh. When physical attractiveness and self-knowledge are both at their peak. Oh. The age when the mature soul illuminates the beauty of the body with the light of its intelligence. Well, I'm unacquainted with this lady, but her portrait is undoubtedly of a flash Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, a thousand times less beautiful, madame than the one etched on my heart. Okay. Oh. Uh, uh. Uh, After she left, I discovered she was the sister of a famous and respected man. This can't be happening. She is unmarried. She lives with her brother in the seclusion whose innocent isolation she prefers to the worldly tumult that the sublime and spiritually pure have always despised. Sir, just spare me the rest. I don't know what is meant by love. I, I would give poor advice about a subject I don't understand. Please, let me finish, and don't let this word love repel you. The love I'm talking about doesn't contaminate my heart. It cleanses it. My own desire for purity is what inflames my desire for this woman. And if I, if I love, if I adore her, it is only because in every one of her features, my soul sees the beauty of her inner perfection. I beg you again, sir, please. Just let me go. People are waiting for me. And we've been far too long alone. Uh. One last word. Racked by these emotions, I made a solemn vow to devote myself to her for the rest of my life. I resolved to speak to her brother in order to be able to stay on in his house for a little while under the pretext of seeking enlightenment, and then once by her side to use the softest, tenderest, most respectful respectful words in love's vocabulary to convince her of a passion for which I thank the gods.
If you reject me, you plunge me into despair. My heart is pounding. I am speechless. All I can do is throw myself at your mercy and fling myself at your feet. Please, just stop this. What do you really want from me? I want my life to become one with yours. Please, just let me stay for a few days. That is all I ask for now. If you agree, Hermocrates can't refuse. You're young, you're attractive, and I I'm no longer either. How can you say that about yourself? Well, yes, I admit that perhaps at one time I was blessed, so people say, with a degree of charm. Leontine, is your modesty supposed to discourage me? How could you have ever been more beautiful than you are right now? The woman I was. Yes. I admit, lovely as you are, your youth will fade as mine will flower, but what power has time compared to love? You know what I'm asking. I need to persuade Hermocrates. And if you won't help me, I will die of a broken heart. <laughs> 